Hello everybody and welcome to Monday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Now if my eyes are looking glazed, it's because they feel glazed. I'm so tired after last night's Zwift race. Listen, we'll get into that news shortly, but first, before we do anything else, can we just take a moment, if you haven't hit that subscription button, then please do it right now. Just hit that notification bell as well so you know when we go live with our videos. But ultimately, I want that subscription button whacked. Just absolutely whack it one if you've not done already. It really helped me out and would feed my ego when I look at my social blade and realise a lot more people are subscribing. Because I want more people to be part of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. I want to fill all those people in who, who don't even know we exist right now. So if you've got a friend who likes cycling, please go and share it. And then just hit that subscription button and, and, and that notification bell. Everybody ready? We've got a packed show. I think we've got a packed show for you today. I need to take a look at the news first. Transition. All right, it seems to have been a very busy weekend of racing. So let's cover all the racing news and start with the biggest news coming out of the weekend. I got my first victory on Zwift. Yay, sounds amazing. Isn't really because they put me in the C group for some reason. I should be a B stroke A category rider, but I don't know, Zwift Power put me in C and oh, that gave me the win. I finished second overall, so technically I still got on the podium, uh, but one guy had gone up the road with, it was like pushing five watts a kilo out for about a good, a good solid hour. But hey, I won the bunch sprint, so I've got to be happy with that. Second race this season, into the Zwift season, already on podium. Eesh. Now let's talk about some less serious racing. La Vuelta finished over the weekend. Primoz Rodlich becomes the first ever Slovenian to win a Grand Tour. So not only have we had the first Colombian to win a Grand Tour, the first Ecuadorian to win a Grand Tour, also the first Slovenian to win a Grand Tour. I don't know if all those stats are correct, but they're staying in now. Tajit Pogacar took the victory on Saturday on stage 20, meaning that he forced himself onto that podium, knocking down Nairo Quintana and also Miguel Angel Lopez into third position. Quintana was fourth, Miguel Angel Lopez drops down to fifth and in doing so puts himself in that white jersey as well as third position on the podium in Madrid. Talking about amazing youngsters, not as young as Tajit Pogacar, but Mathieu van der Poel. Listen, everybody's younger than me in that professional peloton. Anyway, he won the Tour of Britain in emphatic style. Unbelievable. What a rider. He took victory in the final stage from Altrincham to Manchester and in doing so secured his first ever Ovo Energy Tour of Britain victory in his first ever attempt at doing it. Let's just recap his week in Britain. Stage one, Glasgow to Kukubri, finished fourth in the bunch sprint. Stage three, Berwick upon Tweed to Newcastle, he finished second in that slightly uphill bunch sprint. Stage four, Gateshead to Kendall, that was the queen stage of the Tour of Britain. It just went up and up and up and up and up and then down and then up and then down and then up and ultimately finishing on five or 600 meters of just sheer uphill straight to the finish. He ended up winning that with a powerful attack right at the bottom of that hill. Stage six, the individual time trial. I think he surprised everybody in this. Finishing sixth, beating Alex Dowsett. And Warwick to Burton Dasset Country Park. He ended up winning that stage as well. Again, that was another uphill finish. They did a couple of loops at the Burton Dasset Country Park. And on the finish, it was a good five or 600 meters of climbing there. He ended up winning that, Matteo Trentin finishing second. And then the big bunch gallop into Manchester. He won again. He's won on every single type of terrain that there is going here in, in Britain. And then let's just take a look at his, his road career as a whole in 2019. Back in March, he won the Grand Prix Denain, fourth in Ghent Vevelgem, fourth in the Tour of Flanders. He won a Belgian race that I can't even pronounce, Brabantst Biel. Obviously he won Amstel Gold. And then over the summer, we didn't see anything from him because he was out there racing mountain bikes. He turns back up at the Arctic race of Norway, wins the first stage there, second on the second stage, finishes second overall in the points classification, then heads over to Britain for the OVO Energy Tour of Britain, ends up winning it. And along the way, three stages. Now I might be, I might be fanboying all over him here at the minute, but I just think that guy's special. I, listen, he's got some pedigree, we know that. It's just nice to see someone, it's just nice, it's just nice. And there was two days of racing over in Canada over the weekend. The first day was down in Quebec. That was the Grand Prix de Quebec. 
Michael Matthews ended up taking the victory for that. Peter Sagan in second. And Greg Van Avermaet was in third position. Followed by the Grand Prix of Montreal. That was on Sunday. Greg Van Avermaet took victory in that one. Beating Diego Ulisi. And then Ivan Cotino Garcia for Bahrain Merida was in third position. Now I guess, and this is a question I want to pass off to you before we move on any further. Well, who do you think's had the best preparation for Worlds right now? But what is the best preparation? Is it spending three weeks in a Grand Tour, putting miles and miles and miles and hours and hours and hours into those legs? Or is it better to replicate something similar over in Canada? I don't know. Or do you think the fact that riders have come to the Tour of Britain, they'll get a better feel for our roads here and potentially that might be better preparation? Leave your comments down below. And then finishing off the racing news from the weekend, it was a WNT Madrid Challenge by La Vuelta for the ladies. Two stages, overall victory, went to Lisa Brenauer. Lisa won the WNT Madrid Challenge by 10 seconds after her outstanding performance in the individual time trial on stage one. That took place on Saturday. She took the victory there by four seconds ahead of Lucinda Brand. Stage two was on Sunday, and that was following the same circuit that the men took a few hours later. Chloe Hoskins taking the victory there, two hours 20. Letizia Patinosta took second position, and Roxanne Fuene took third position. Lucinda Brand fourth in that. And Lisa Brenauer finishing 16th position in that race, however, giving her overall victory in that GC by 10 seconds, as I said, thanks to that wonderful individual time trial. Next up, and staying with the OVO Energy Tour of Britain, it was quite an emotional weekend for, for not only riders riding the Tour of Britain, but also the staff that organise it and fans as we said goodbye to two of the biggest teams on the British domestic scene. Madison Genesis finally hanged their wheels up after seven years of racing in the British domestic scene, being part of that wonderful time here in the UK. Founded in 2013 as a platform for developing UK road talent, Roger Hammond was the team's DS and manager at the time, and what he wanted to do was bring riders through, use Madison Genesis as a learning ground, as a proving ground, to then go on to bigger and better things. They pretty much did that. After riding with Madison Genesis, Alex Peters got offered a contract with Team Sky. Scott Davis joined Team Dimension Data. New Zealander Tom Scully finished his fourth Grand Tour this year with EF Education First. He rode for Madison Genesis in 2014 and 2015. Mark McNally joined the professional continental squad of Wanty Group Go Bear in 2016. And then Connor Swift left Madison Genesis for RKS Semsic this year after he secured the British National Road Championships for Madison Genesis last year in 2018. As Madison Genesis folds, so do some of its riders, and four announced their retirements over the weekend. Eric Rousel, George Pym, Tom Moses, Tobin Horton announced his retirement a few weeks ago, and Ian Bibby all announced their retirements at the end of the Tour of Britain. And I've not even touched on the fact that Team Wiggins are folding as well. This, this really has been one of those feeder teams to try and get these youngsters the platform they need to be able to race at the races they need to prove themselves to be able to move on to World Tour. This year we've seen Gabs Collet, he's moved on to movie style from there. Rob Scott has proved himself one of the best domestic riders around. Surely he's in line for a decent ride next year, but still nothing's been uh, announced on that one. Mark Donovan's another one. He's moving up to Team Sunweb next year. Obviously, you've got Tom Pidcock in there who, who isn't going to be wanting for a professional contract anytime soon. But his main interest right now is obviously Cyclocross. But what I want to know is now these teams have gone, we've lost JLT Condor. We've lost Madison Genesis. We've just lost Team Wiggins. Is this the ice age for British cycling domestic scene now? Maybe now we don't have as many continental teams here in the UK that riders from these elite teams are going to get the platform they need to actually say, hey, I'm really good. I'm capable of stepping up to, to World Tour, to Pro Conti, whatever it might be. Uh, down below, let me know. Good thing, bad thing. And that's where we're going to end today's video. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. If you've not enjoyed it, hit that dislike button. I don't mind, just as long as you tell me in the comments why. See if we can do better next time. As ever, if you want to be part of any of those live streams when we go live, if you want to get involved in those races, make sure you're following me here. You've hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and go and follow me over on Zwift as well so you know when I start my rides there. As ever, until tomorrow. Eesh.